What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, H-A-W-G sports.com. Arkansas just completed the first major scrimmage of the 2024 spring. We're going to talk about all that. Go ahead and get your questions in now, and I'll answer some of that, whether it's player evaluations, just my thoughts on everything, how it's gone through eight practices. Be happy to answer all that. We'll talk a little bit about basketball portal season and recruiting, of course. There were some recruits in town. Danny West is going to hop on with us uh, to discuss that. All your questions and more on today's episode of Hog Sports Live. Look at all the ways to watch and listen. Always streaming on YouTube. Be sure to follow the page on YouTube, subscribe to the page, and set it to where you're alerted anytime we upload new videos. Also available on Facebook. Be sure to follow the page on Facebook where we have 90,000 Razorback fans following us. We put all of our free content there so you can watch videos and watch all of our, excuse me, read all of our free content. Also available on Apple Podcasts. Uh, throw us a five star review if you haven't done so already on Apple Podcasts. We'd love to have that from you. Spotify, Google Podcasts, anywhere else podcast are found we are there at h-a-w-g sports live all right we're jumping right into this hog sports is also just one dollar right now for your first month h-a-w-g sports.com it's a pretty active season we are in the cluster right now um everything but we don't have basketball but uh you know you have basketball portal season Arkansas baseball plays a midweek game against Arkansas State. You can bet on all that stuff on Bet Saracen. If you want to bet uh, inside the state of Arkansas, the only legal way to do it is through apps like Bet Saracen, and they are the leader. So go to Bet Saracen, download the app, uh, whether it's Android or App Store or wherever. You can also go online and use Bet Saracen. Arkansas got a big portal commitment from Josh Cohen, 6'10, 220 pounds. He's the number 53 overall prospect in the NCAA transfer portal, according to 24 7 Sports, number nine overall power forward. It's a good addition for Arkansas. 6'10, 220 pounds. Um, not like an above the rim type of guy, but a guy who's pretty steady for UMass last year. Averaged 15.9 points per game, 6.8 rebounds. See if anything jumps out, really. Uh, in, in individual games. His last game was against VCU. He had 14 points, six rebounds. Really good free throw shooter also. He was eight of nine in that game. Um, had 19 and nine against Foreman. I don't know who that is, F-O-R. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he's had some, had some really nice games. Had 28 and eight in a game this season. 28 and six against Old Dominion. 28-5 and five against Portland. So, nice addition for Arkansas. That puts them at – let's put them at total. Seven total on the roster if everything stays the same. That was Jalen Shelley, uh, Elohim, who are the, the freshman additions. you got Caleb Battle, uh, who has an end of the portal. I mean, I'm sure these guys obviously, you know, testing NBA stuff. Trevin Brazil, Bay Fall – Tremont Mark, those are the guys that haven't entered the, entered the portal uh, for Arkansas. And obviously there's some options out there with them testing NBA waters and things like that. But right now, if nothing else changes, then you've got six spots remaining to add players through the transfer portal. All of them will be added through the transfer portal, obviously. Eric Musselman's not at SMU. He's not at DePaul. The USC job is open. There's been some discussion about USC. If you noticed in the last video when we talked about the truth of Arkansas basketball, um, you know, one of the things I said was like he's not going to any of these other schools, but if there's, you know, maybe the right West Coast job opens up. So maybe that's something to keep an eye on a little bit. Hunter Yurchek did put out a tweet about, uh, you know, the must bust thing from a few years ago. I'm not sure that that means a whole lot. So don't read too much into that either. But uh, I don't think that Musselman is going anywhere. I'll say that. Uh, but – you know, maybe that's something just to keep an eye on. It went official today with the USC coach going to SMU. Um, but, again, I don't – I'm not anticipating anything. Things happen, though, in college basketball. But right now, I think Muscle want to be back. Um, Dave Van Horn was at the Swatters Club today. It's April 1st, by the way. Uh, Colin Fisher is going to get the start against Arkansas State. Let's look at the schedule for baseball real quick. So, that, that game's Tuesday – Today's Monday, by the way, April 1st. That, was, that game is Tuesday, April 2nd against Arkansas State at 6 p.m. The Razorbacks coming off a big sweep against LSU. That doesn't happen very often. 7-4 on Thursday, 4-3 in 10 innings 
on Friday and 7-5 on Saturday before Easter. Hope everybody had a good Easter, ate plenty of good food, got together with family, celebrated. Um, so Arkansas State, 6 o'clock Tuesday, and then you've got another home series against Ole Miss. So that's Thursday, April 4th, Friday, April 5th, and Saturday, April 6th. These are all, let's see, Thursday's a 6 o'clock, Friday's 6.30, and then Saturday's a 2 o'clock game. And that'll be interesting because Saturday they'll have another football scrimmage. Uh, so that scrimmage, I believe, let me see when that is. I believe it's like 10-something. Uh, okay. Nope. Yep, spring guide. All right, so that is – so, so we got Tuesday at 8.25. Bobby Petrino will be speaking tomorrow, so you're going to want to tune in and see all of our content because we're going to have some good questions for Bobby Petrino on Tuesday after practice, 10.45, um, around when that press conference will be. And then Thursday they have 8.25 practice. We'll be able to speak to Travis Williams. We haven't spoken to him in a while. So we'll get both coordinators on Tuesday and Thursday. And then Saturday um, – They'll have the scrimmage. They'll have another scrimmage. So, And it says Scott Fountain. I assume we're also going to get players in addition to getting to talk to special teams coordinators. So all three coordinators will be um, spoken to this week. And then hopefully players also on Saturday after that scrimmage. That'll be practice 11. Again, it's listed at 1025 a.m. So I assume there'll be like, a, you know, kind of like last time, be able to park in lot 44, gate 14, which is right there. That interest at the north end zone um, should open a little bit before the practice. And uh, it, there wasn't a whole lot of fans at the last one. I mean, there was, I don't know, 250, 300 maybe total fans at the at the last scrimmage. So it wasn't a whole lot. Obviously, there's other things going on, Arkansas Derby and stuff like that. But uh, maybe there'll be more. I, I thought it was pretty entertaining overall. We're going to get into that a little bit here in a minute. But um, that's the schedule coming up. So practice 11 uh, Saturday. So Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday be the 11th of practice. And then next week um, you, you've got Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday with the red-white game at noon. And that will wrap up the spring. Okay, so we added 152 plays on the scrimmage Saturday, unofficial stats. Where are my stat numbers? Here we go. All right, so offense started out really well. Taylor Green uh, did not finish with a, a like a great completion percentage or anything. He was 10 of 23 for 149 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. So they went – they went down and scored. Uh, I believe on that drive they hit, he hit Luke Haz for a touchdown. The next drive, uh, I believe it was Satania. I believe it was Satania who scored that next drive. Both, you know, the Satania pass was probably the nicest throw of the day. Um, pretty long. Do I have that written down exactly? Let me see if I can find our big plays real quick. Um, okay, so, all right, so – the first-team offense against first-team defense on the first two series guided them to an eight-play, 75-yard touchdown drive and a nine-play, 65-yard touchdown drive. Those were the first two series. The first drive ended with a 24-yard touchdown uh, pass to, to Lucas, who was in double coverage uh, in the right corner of the end zone. And then the second one, the second one, let's see. Green also ran five times for 26 yards. Okay, the second one was a 10-yard touchdown run by Jaquindon Jackson. That's right. And Jaquindon, um, he did not play like the second half of the, of, the, of the scrimmage. He had nine carries for 44 yards in the touchdown. Okay, so the next two drives were back-to-back -back three and out. So the defense started to show up, got a little bit stronger, and then they had the 65-yard touchdown drive. This one ended in a 33-yard touchdown to Isaiah Satania. Really nice throw down the left sideline, which seems to me Green likes throwing left when he throws deep. He likes the left sideline. Uh, but that was a perfect throw. Couldn't have been thrown better. Nice tight spiral right on the money. Uh, now, when we got down to the end in two-minute and throughout really the rest of the scrimmage, I felt like the defense outplayed the offense overall. So the offense came out, got off to a strong start. Defense kind of settled in, had those two three and outs. Um, the two-minute situations, I felt like they also won those. I mean, they, they obviously did. The offense the first time had to 
uh, basically protect the ball and try to get a first down. There was like 157 left on the clock. Defense had three timeouts. The offense wasn't able to get the first down. They punted. The offense took the field again, this time the second-team offense, and the second-team defense stopped the second-team offense. Um, the next time it was the offense had to get down there and score, and they weren't able to score also. So defense to me, you know, when it mattered at the end of the game, the defense stood up and uh, – and uh, Arkansas defense, I would say, won the scrimmage overall. Now let's look at the stats a little bit more here. So you had Taylor Green, as I mentioned, 10 of 23 for 149 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. That pick was – who made that pick? Hudson Clark. So that came – that, I believe, was in that two-minute situation when they had to go down and score. They were trying to score. And green, the pass just kind of sailed on green a little bit. It was a deep throw, sailed on green a little bit, and Clark was there to intercept it. That was the only interception of the scrimmage. There was another time when Jalen Braxton should have had an interception and, and dropped it um, in the end zone. Braxton had a pretty good scrimmage overall. Malachi Singleton, 10 of 14 for 88 yards. Jacoby Criswell, 8 of 15 for 60 yards. Malachi and Jacoby – exclusively operated with the second-team offense. Malachi definitely saw the most reps between the two. K.J. Jackson operated with the third team exclusively. And those were the only quarterbacks who played. Rashad DeBinion had 15 carries for 65 yards. Jaquinnon Jackson had nine for 44, as I mentioned. Braylon Russell had nine for 50 and a touchdown. Braylon had some nice runs. He had a nice long run early. Uh, Isaiah Augusta had nine for 26. And Dominic Johnson had four for 26. As far as receivers, I mentioned Isaiah Satania had a really nice day. Five catches for 88 yards and a touchdown. Satania's had a really nice spring, I think. Varkis Gums had four for 44. Varkis Gums, I've got stories on Varkis Gums. Um, you know, just the, the – the, how much better he's looked, really. Like, we've seen them in a lot of two tight end sets. He just looks comfortable. He looks like the guy – I mean, this guy was a four-star recruit. At least, like – top 10 tight end in the country in the transfer portal, set all kinds of records for North Texas and came in last year and rolled late, just never looked comfortable in the offense, just looked timid. And this year he has just looked like a different player. Super fast for a guy his size, about 240. Tight end group looks good. I, I would say like the tight end group, the um, the wide receivers that those groups have really impressed me so far. Um, defensively, I like what I see out of the linebackers. I worry a little bit about the overall youth with that group, and you know, on defensive line, I like the defensive line. It just it's not as deep as it as it used to be. So, hmm. Okay. All right. Let's hop over to Danny West real quick. We might get back into some scrimmage, answer some questions and stuff, but I want to get to Danny. So for those of you who don't follow Danny, you can reach him at Danny West 24-7 on Twitter. Hey, Danny. How's it going, man? Just updating, a, just updating a little bit of uh, scrimmage stuff. You were at the scrimmage Saturday. What were your thoughts overall? Yeah, um, about what I expected. I, I would say there are position groups that I feel maybe a little bit better about coming out of the scrimmage and maybe some that I, I still have concerns about from a depth standpoint. But, <clears throat> you know, it's also important to remember, you know, when I'm covering these scrimmages and I'm trying to keep stats, it's hard for me to watch every single position group that I'd like to, you know? So yeah, I wish I could uh, tell you I've got a thorough evaluation of everybody, but I don't, but I, I really like the running backs. Um, I was impressed by Jackson and yeah, that's what you want to see, you know, guys bouncing off of him. Braylon Russell was kind of the same deal, Trey. I think they've got something there Yeah, with, um, you know, even the throwing game. I noticed those guys a few times just out there in the flats. You know, it could be one of those years with a new quarterback still trying to figure it out to a certain extent under a new um, offensive coordinator. Maybe there's going to be some opportunities where you find those guys, dump it off to them, and, and as we saw Saturday, they can be 
they could be a handful to bring down. So I like that aspect of it. Uh, the tight ends impress me. I think we often forget, maybe not you, but it's easy for me to forget about Varkis Gums at times. But mm. when you see him on Saturday, I mean, you're kind of reminded that's a guy that could probably step right in and, and help him, you know. Uh, take some of the load off Luke, who is um, everything you would expect him to be, look like Saturday. Yeah. So, Danny, obviously there's a lot of recruits there. Um, what can you tell us about how all that went? Yeah, still sitting here talking to a couple of them right now. Uh, matter of fact, Dre Gardner, uh, Garner, I'm sorry, the big-time kid out from California, San Diego, um, Lincoln High School. We've got him as a three-star, highly recruited three-star, but he's a composite four star we call him an athlete but looking at him as a wide receiver in this 2025 class he's been here a couple of times now and he tells me within the last hour arkansas stands very high on my list so he's starting to feel like one that maybe uh, we might be talking about for the long haul here trey obviously really good friends with tay lockett who's already committed for your 2026 class and uh, I want to say five or six of those uh, Cali boys came out this past weekend. So got a lot of positive feedback from them going on the site. But uh, Dre specifically, because we have talked about him for so long, um, I think he's one to keep an eye on. I know San Diego State being right there at home, you don't see this crossover a lot. SEC school plus San Diego State in the mix. But it uh, looks like they're doing a good job with him as well. But I think Arkansas could be. Don't want to speak for the young man, but I, I would venture to say they could be working their way into the driver's seat at this point. So um, that was a good one. Kane Archer just hit me back uh, within the last hour or so. He had another really good visit, as well as his brother Kane, who's obviously in the current class, the 2025 class. Good to see those guys. Uh, Sydney Walton, I'll wrap up with this one. Uh, and let you ask me about somebody else, but mm -hmm. Sydney Walton, out of Moody, Alabama, is a 2025 safety that I think we're going to be talking about for a while. Uh, seems like Arkansas is in a really good spot there. He came up for his unofficial. He was just offered in January. Scott Fountain goes down and offers him. And uh, you think about guys from Alabama right now. They also had Caleb Smith up here out of Parker High School in Birmingham. Uh, Taj Overton is another defensive back out of Alabama in this class. So it, it seems like they've really put a uh, heavy emphasis on that state lately, and it's going to be another uh, class that I would expect probably three to four more signees from Alabama in this year's um, hall. Mm -hmm. Danny, what's coming up on recruiting? What's what's next on the horizon? Yeah, they've got some more visits coming in for uh, April 6th, obviously another scrimmage this weekend. But really, it's all about uh, the red-white game. Mm -hmm. Starting to hear from us, some of these guys who were on campus this weekend already making plans to come back in two weeks, like LeBron Bauer, uh, the cornerback out of Allen, Texas, 2026 class. Just talked to him uh, earlier today. He said he's coming back for the red-white game. So that one would be next. And then I would say a little bit of a lull. But, man, you start looking up at some of these June official visit lists, it's going to be popping pretty good. I think one weekend, maybe the 21st weekend, they're already up to nine guys. Mm -hmm. I want to say the 14th has like seven or eight guys already. So that's really what's uh, what's kind of what's around the corner for me, as well as camp. Uh, obviously, camp season coming up in June, that's always a big one for us. Yeah, and contact period, I guess, April 15th, right? Yeah, uh, shoot, I'll uh, skip right over that. But obviously, April 15th starts contact period as well as transfer portal period. Mm -hmm. So 15-day uh, window there. So uh, yeah, sorry for skipping over that nice little tidbit, but that's <laughs> definitely coming around the corner here. Yeah. Danny, what I mean, what do you make out of Arkansas's recent um, decommitments? I think we were on the show maybe last week when Carius Kern yeah, decommitted. Trying to get through this one without seeing another one jump off board. Here. <laughs> I know, I know. But um, two two decommitments, two four-star recruits. Yeah. You know, I I think there's, uh, there's a lot to it, but – you know, I, I talked about it towards the end of last year when kind of the wheels fell off that my biggest concern is always, you know, perception and momentum because once you lose them yep. in recruiting, I, I sound like a broken record, but it's really tough to get it back. So I think we're, I think what we're seeing right now, buddy, is a lack of momentum, you know, and that's, that's a byproduct of uh, what, what we saw on the field last year. And of course, losing the, 
state's top player in last year's class. All of these things have consequences. You know, there's mm-hmm. there's consequences for losing. And uh, I think the only way to get it back is to go out and try to win with what you've got, right? But then the next part of that is keeping your in-state guys at home. And so when you lose one like Carius, yeah, it hurts from a ranking standpoint, a talent standpoint. Obviously, he's a tremendous player. Mm-hmm. But, man, at some point, it just it makes it so much easier for that next class to say, okay, the, last year's big-time guy went out of state. I can too, you know. So yeah. you don't want to start a trend with that. And, you know, it's kind of dangerous territory that they're in right now. But winning cures everything. If you can go out and win with what you've got, I think they could still get it back on board. But that would be um, – that's what I'm seeing right now, just a lack of, of momentum more than anything. Yeah. Danny West joining us again. You can follow him at Danny West 24-7. He's the Hog Sports recruiting analyst. Hop on Hog Sports and get all his information. Most of it is VIP. Interact with him on the Razor's Edge message board as well. Uh, but definitely follow him on Twitter. Danny, you just hit 50,000 also on Twitter, right? Or X, yeah, whatever yeah, we're calling so. it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. – Appreciate that, so everybody. N- no momentum in recruiting. <laughs> yeah, good talking to you. All right, buddy. <laughs> no, Trey, it's, it's never as bad as it might seem, mm-hmm. you know, but, you know, as, as well as anybody. Sometimes Last it is. Sometimes it is. Now, I know people, anytime there's a double up and you lose four or mm-hmm. two four stars in one day, you know, I think people that don't follow recruiting as closely were probably a lot more bothered by that last yeah. week, but. Obviously, the second half of that being Jamari and Parker, we knew for a while that yeah. that's going to be really tough for them to hold on to. So, probably never as bad as you think. And of course, there's there's still time. Yep. As we've seen with Landon and Braylon uh, in the past, there's still time to see this thing come full circle. But yeah, just need some positive. Uh, need something positive to happen. It's about time for a commitment. Get into camp season, shake it up a little bit, see if some of these OVs will jump on board and, and get some of that momentum back. Yep. All right, Danny. I mean, I really don't know what else to ask you about unless you got some updates on some individual guys. <laughs> That's about it. Um, yeah, let me see who I may have skipped over here. Gerald Mays, J.J. Mays, uh, Pflugerville, Texas, Weiss High School. He was a big-time 2026 mm-hmm. uh, offensive lineman who was on campus this past weekend. We'll have something on him shortly, as well as 2026 athlete, another California guy, Joshua Holland out of St. John Bosco. We've got Quinn Murphy still to put out 2026 Argyle Texas Liberty Christian High School big time quarterback here at Trey so all of this is coming down the pipe on Hog Sports we got uh, plenty to talk about though yep all right brother appreciate yeah, you hopping on all right everybody that's Danny West again just a quick recruiting bit of intel there again follow Danny if you haven't done so Danny West 24 7 on Twitter all right what do we want to hop into now where are we at We've talked about recruiting. We talked a little bit about the scrimmage. We'll get to some of your questions. We talked about Muss a little bit, the truth of Arkansas basketball. Again, didn't expect him to take SMU. Didn't expect him to take um, Louisville. DePaul, obviously, didn't expect him to take that. I'm not closing the door on USC, though. I mean, as we talked about, like, that was maybe an opportunity where, you know, he moves out west, all that stuff. Whether it's a real possibility or a leveraging opportunity for him, um, you know, something to definitely still keep an eye on, that USC job. I don't think you can just, like, rest easy right now as much as people would hate to hear that. (laughs) I don't think you can just completely rest easy on Musselman and the possibility of him going back out west, which is where he's from, and that USC job is open. So just something to keep an eye on. All right. Let's see if we got some questions from you guys. Uh, Colby House says he appreciates the show. We appreciate you, Colby. How about that sweet versus LSU, says Razorback84. Yes, sir. Grant Patrick says, Trey, what's your thoughts on Jacoby Criswell and why it seems like he's not the next QB after KJ? I understand we brought in Taylor Green, but it just seemed like Jacoby was next in line. Yeah, I mean, 
I kind of I think we all assumed that after the season ended, we knew that they would go out and get a quarterback. It just depended on who they got. But you know, they're able to do so much more in the spring as far as like seven on seven and stuff like that that you should not be able to do because you do have so many new players every year. So the NCAA changed some things, allowed them to do more work with the coaches pre-spring and that's basically where Taylor Green just kind of I guess separated himself and we have seen pretty exclusively Taylor Green exclusively not pretty exclusively with the first group we've seen Malachi Singleton with the second group and Jacoby Criswell with the third group I mean that's just how it has been the whole time um, I am ready to I, I can I name Taylor Green as the starting quarterback I guess I could Taylor Green's the starting quarterback at Arkansas there I mean, that's what Arkansas is going to do here in a few more practices. They're going to name Taylor Green. And we'll see what happens with Jacoby Criswell. Obviously, you know, he has been a backup to Sam Howell. He's been a backup to um, – oh, who's the guy who, last year at US at uh, North Carolina who was so good? Drake May. And then K.J. Jefferson. And now, you know, he's a senior. He's got two years of eligibility left. So, we'll see what happens there. But um, – you know, I haven't seen anything that Jacoby's done that leads me to think, well, he should definitely jump Malachi Singleton, who's significantly younger than him also, and a guy that you can still develop and build into a starter. So, uh, I mean, Taylor Green just makes all the sense in the world. He throws a really nice ball. He's tall. He's fast. He just brings a lot to the table. Um, so it makes a lot of sense that he would be your starter, even over Criswell, who's, you know, was the backup last year. For question time, how excited for the Texas A&M game this year since it's the last one in Jerry World? It is the last one, yeah, and Arkansas is the away team, so it doesn't count against the home game, so I like that even better. Here comes – you know, Bobby Petrino, by the way, against Texas A&M at Arkansas is 3-0 and as a coach at Arkansas. Here comes a regular, says, I know it's got to be rough for Chris Well, but it might just be that Green's better potential from what, I, what they've seen. I, I, that's what I see. I mean, Criswell has a lot of good qualities, good head on his shoulders, uh, throws a really nice high-velocity ball. He's got a lot of good qualities. Let's see here. Allergies are acting up a little bit. Mitten says, "I heard the must bust, bust tweet was not sent by Hunter. He was very ha he wasn't very happy. I mean, I've heard from people that Musselman was unaware. I've heard from several people that Musselman was unaware that that tweet was getting sent out. I think the people have acted like he's furious. I don't know if that's the case so much, but Keebler says, "I work in Crescent Butte. Hello, how's the offense looking so far? Um." Offense is looking better. Now, I'll say this with the offense last spring. They were throwing it all over the place, utilizing the whole field. The offense that we saw as the season started was way different than the offense we saw in the spring last year. Maybe they were trying to figure out what they have or what they don't have, but it feels like the season got here and they just packed it in and started being super conservative. And in the spring, they were throwing it all over the place. The difference is I know that Petrino – if it's working or not, he's still going to throw it all over the place. He just is until they get it right. So, uh, to me, the offense is looking better. I just know that I feel like everybody else in the SEC, for the most part, is probably better than they were last year. Just because as we continue to get more and more in this transfer portal age, teams are recognizing, hey, we can just go out and get you know a bunch of defensive tackles, especially in the SEC in a major conference like this. Um so I feel like, yeah, maybe Arkansas is better than they were last year, but I feel like everybody else is maybe going to be better for the most part. Not everybody. I mean, LSU probably not going to have a Heisman winning trophy quarterback. Alabama certainly lost a lot to the transfer portal with Saban leaving. So there's all that kind of stuff. But I feel like most of the middle of the pack, bottom of the pack SEC teams are probably going to be elevated next year. And I think Arkansas is part of that. It's just – how do they look compared to everybody else? And it's easy for me to like compare Arkansas to past Arkansas teams, but it's more difficult, especially in this age, to compare them to other teams because the rosters turn over so much. Grant Patrick says, Trey, do you think Davion Dozier will get into the top four of our wide receiver depth chart? I think that he will get into the top six. Okay, so, I mean, let's, let's break it down. You've got um, Andrew Armstrong, who's wide receiver number one, Isaiah Satania, who I think will end up starting for him. And uh, Tyrone Broden, 
Jaden Wilson would also be in that top four. Isaac Tesla is in that group. And then I think maybe Davion Dozier, probably. Um, so somewhere in the top six. Benjamin Young says, Trey, if you could add any past player to this football team, who would it be? No QBs, no DMAC. Hmm. Who would I add? Maybe I move Jason Peters to tackle. Could add Andrew Arms or excuse me, Andrew Arms. I could add uh, Sean Andrews. No QBs, no DMAC. Hmm. Steve Atwater. Would he be relevant in this day and age? Would he get it sent out for targeting over and over again? Um, it's a good question. I mean, I could say like Hunter Henry or something, but they're, I feel like they're pretty good shape at tight end. I think I might pick a lineman. <laughs> I think I might pick a lineman. Frank Ragnow, Sean Andrews, maybe Sean Andrews. It's a good question. Maybe a defensive lineman. I mean, I like their defensive line. Just I know that they could be deeper. Quentin Caver would look good on this linebacker core. It's a good question. Sean Andrews. Will Isaiah Satania end up being Bobby Petrino's new Joe Adams? I think they're going to go to him a lot. I mean, I mentioned his scrimmage stats. I just – and he had a really good spring last year, if you guys remember, Satania did, and just kind of disappeared a little bit. You can tell noticeably that he's thickened up a little bit. He's he's definitely added some some weight, good weight. Still looks equally as fast as he always has. I do think this we'll see Satania take a really nice jump forward. Who's the quarterback of the defense this year, says Dalton's Motorsports. Probably going to end up being Xavier Sori, I guess. I really like Brad Spence a lot. I think that Spence brings a lot to the table. Definitely somebody to consider. Um, but there's just so much newness on, out there. I mean, you kinda ha- you're going to have a guy in the defensive secondary, you know, Hudson Clark really runs a lot of stuff that goes on back there. The linebacker level, you know, maybe sorry when it's all said and done. I, th- I think that Spence could lead him in tackles and lead him in sacks next year. I really do. If they use him in that mint front. So they're I, I think we talked about the mint front a little bit. Basically, what they're doing is – what you're seeing a lot of teams do this, but it's basically like a 3-3-5 three, three, in a way. Um, you've got you know two ends and a 4 eye. you got a head-up nose, and then you've got what Arkansas is calling the buck um, in like a wide nine. So outside the tight end, and he's a pass rusher basically. And they've used Nico Davier there, who's 6'4", 271. They've used Brad Spence there, who's 6'2", 240. So two different types of players just for different types of situations um, at that buck position, which is basically a pass rusher. And you're going to see them use that quite a bit. They worked on this all last week. So the first week they came back from spring break the whole time. Necrophoric? What is a necrophoric? Necro, isn't that dead? Man, what about these three four stars we've lost the past few days? Hey, they only lost two four stars. <laughs> um, if we have to go into next year with these linebackers and no transfers, we are we in trouble or not? I think they could use one more veteran linebacker. I I like the looks of the linebacker core. I just I just know they're young, and in this day and age, you don't really have to hope and you know. You don't have to hope that somebody's going to be good because you can also go out and just get somebody you know who's experienced. And I mentioned to Sam Pittman, Antonio Greer, like a guy like that would be helpful for the linebacker room, somebody who's veteran, a guy that was a former All-AAC player, maybe not a superstar or something. It's great to get a superstar, but if you can just go out and get a guy who's who's veteran who can increase the age of that room because when those other two freshman linebackers enroll, you're going to have nine linebackers on campus and seven of them are going to be second-year or first-year players. That's, that's, that's young. K. Gully says, hey, Trey, how was it interviewing the quarterbacks? Have you ever simultaneously interviewed players that were competing for the same position? It seemed awkward because Green got most of the questions. Yeah, I felt that a little bit too because we, we've we not had Jacoby Criswell in that room before, and, you know, he wasn't asked a whole lot of questions. Uh 
you know, for a guy that's first time in the interview room. So that was definitely interesting. But here's what I know about like how sports information is going to really, you know, dictate those kinds of things. Quarterback's a very sensitive position, obviously. Um, like we were never going to talk to a backup quarterback, you know, last year. We were just going to talk to KJ, and that's it. They weren't going to bring in a backup. This year, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense since they haven't officially named a starting quarterback to bring just bring in a quarterback because that kind of gives the sense that they have named one. It's going to be Taylor Green, but we're still going to kind of do this dance a little bit. It's just kind of the way it is. Try to be fair to everybody. Uh Brent Danley says, yo, Trey, any hope for this O-line? Sounds like the same crap we've heard the last few years. My, my crap? <laughs> um, I think it's going to be a better offensive line. I'm not ready to just say, like, well, they're going to be a good offensive line because they were just flat bad last year. I think it's a good move to move Kudis inside. Joshua Braun was actually pretty solid for him last year. Um, I like what I've seen out of it, uh, Fernando Carmona. But I don't know if you're like you're going to stack this offensive line up against like here's LSU's offensive line, here's Arkansas's. Like you're going to take LSU's offensive line, you know. You're going to take Oklahoma's offensive line, Texas's offensive line. So, but Arkansas has had really good offensive lines before. I say really good. Let's say good, good offensive lines before that haven't been just like one NFL guy after another. Houston Nut used to have you know guys that you know, never went on to really play the offensive line in in the NFL. Um, But they had good units, you know. Uh, They, like, they might have, like, a Sean Andrews here and there, you know, on the offensive line. Or back when Petrino was at Arkansas, you know, they might have, like, a DeMarcus Love on the offensive line who, you know, went on to the NFL or an Alvin Bailey. But generally, they were, like, you know, a guy here or there. It wasn't just like one guy after another. I mean, you go back to that 2015 offensive line, you had a lot of NFL guys. You had uh, Denver Kirkland and Dan Skipper and uh, Frank Rag now was a freshman on that offensive line. Mitch Mothers was a really good uh, freshman – or, excuse me, was a really good center, excuse me, who didn't go on to the NFL. Uh, Sebastian Dratola. I mean, you had some some good players uh, on that offensive line. That might be like from a talent standpoint as, as good as any Arkansas has had. So is there an NFL offensive lineman on this line? I don't I don't know yet. I do think they'll be better, but again, I think everybody in the SEC in the middle and bottom is probably going to be better than they were last year and yeah. I don't know that I, I like I'm not going to say this is going to be a great offensive line, but I think they have a chance to be better. I think Bobby Petrino as an offensive coordinator will do a better job at recognizing where they're not strong. And I don't know that Dan Enos always did that, sometimes asking the offensive linemen to do stuff that they weren't comfortable with. Um, I don't think that they ever really meshed well with Cody Kennedy. I don't think Cody Kennedy know, you know, really got how to teach the offensive line what Dan Enos wanted him to do, and it was just, it was just kind of a cluster. And it just all blew up. Hey, Trey, how would you judge Green's decision-making, says Michael Myers. I mean, it's interesting because you always see Bobby Petrino, you know, kind of standing back behind him, and you can see Petrino look to where he wants him to go. And you see that with all the quarterbacks, and then they go a different direction, and then you can see, like, you know, how Bobby would do, like neck poked out, pointing other directions and stuff. Um yeah, I mean, it's it's hard for me to tell sometimes, obviously, but because uh, I don't know, like, what the play is. But, um, I mean, I feel like overall he's done a pretty good job and has been pretty consistent. He did not have just an outstanding scrimmage on Saturday. But it was good overall. It was okay. They just didn't win in the end. That's that's where you really want to see the offense do it. But if the offense does that, then, you know, they're going against the one defense, so you're like, oh, great, the defense is terrible. You know, it's kind of it cuts both ways. Seth Hawthorne says, do you think this is a foregone conclusion now at this point for Bobby and Sam on green starting? Yes, I think green's the starter. Grant Patrick says, how much do you see Braylon Russell contributing this year? I could see Braylon contributing, definitely. I thought he ran well in the scrimmage. Um, He is a powerful, big, powerful back who's got some speed, and he's a load to bring down. I think especially, you know, in scrimmages, you don't tackle below the waist. That's like a no-no. So you always tackle high in scrimmages. 
I mean, I can see people trying to hit him on the hip and just bouncing off of him. I wouldn't want to tackle him high either. I mean, uh, I, I do think that he'll play. I think Jaquin and Jackson is going to be the starting running back. And then after that, I think there's a mix. I mean, you're going to see DeBinion. You're going to see Braylon Russell, Isaiah Gustav, uh, Dominic Johnson maybe some. So after – after Jaquindon, I think you're probably going to see a mix, but I could see a number two guy. I would like to see a number two guy emerge from that group of running backs. I, I like to see a starter and a backup, and those two guys rotate. Maybe you have a situational guy as the third back, but what I don't like seeing, and I think is always a mistake when coaches do this, is when we're like, we're going to evenly rotate these running backs. No, you need a guy. You need a guy that can get in a groove. And I think that'll be Jaquindon Jackson and then maybe Braylon Russell behind him. Unless you need somebody who's a little more shifty and maybe that's where a guy like uh, Augusta or, um, or DeBinion, of course, could come in. What record does Sam have to have to keep his job? I don't know if just like Egan into a bowl game will do it or not. I mean, you really have to be sitting in it to know how you feel about it, right? I mean, like we can say, you say at the beginning of the season, oh, yeah, I mean, if they win eight, I'll be happy. Well, really? What about those four losses? How are you going to feel after those four losses? You can tell me, like, yeah, you're fine. They're on pace to do what I thought they were going to do. No, you'll be livid. You know you will. Jason Hodges says, with this fan base and the rumor mills, so much negativity. It, all the rumors are negative, right? Um, so much negativity. Do we deserve a good team in any sport? You know, yes, we do. We deserve it. You know, these these kids key on in on social media. I mean, when does all the bull crap stop? It's a good point. Every neg- every rumor is negative. You know, it's not like, oh, there's some really good news coming. You know, when's the last time you've heard stuff like that? Razorback84 says, do you think if the wheels fall off for Coach Pittman this year that we already have our next head coach on campus? I guess you mean T-Will or Bobby Petrino? Uh, let's see. Let's see. See if it comes to that. I don't know. I don't know if I want to speculate on that. I've certainly thought about that a little bit. If you know, whether what if things go really well and Pittman decides he's he's ready to retire, you know, what about that? Well, let's maybe do positive. <laughs> Here comes a regular says. Does anyone else actually feel more comfortable with the lack of hype this year? I mean, the lack of hype is right there coinciding with, um, you know, the four and eight football season. Right. I mean, that's that's just what it is. So, you know, Missouri won six games year before last and bounced back and had a really good season. They've certainly got a much better schedule than Arkansas. But, um, I mean, I think uh, most people are just kind of like me, just kind of cautious, not letting themselves get too hyped up. And if things fall in place and are great, then great. You know, everybody will think that Arkansas is going to win every game if it comes to that. I mean, it's just how you feel in the heat of the moment that's – the thing of football and the last taste of football that we had was just getting smoked by Missouri, you know? So, um, that's just kind of what we're stewing in a four and eight season didn't go to a bowl game. So, uh, there's certain, some in- intriguing moves for the off season with Bobby Petrino coming in. That's definitely been exciting. Something to pay attention to because you know, the guy can run offense. And I've said it before, if Petrino picks the offense up. If the defense can be comparable to how they were the first three quarters of the season, then maybe they'll have something if all that stuff happens. Um, but so far, Arkansas has just not really been able to, to put it all together. Maybe that 2021 season. All right, everybody. We did it. So we covered recruiting. We talked spring football. We talked about Musselman and USC, which I wouldn't close the door on it. You know, I mean, it's something I'm watching. I haven't heard anybody. Nobody's told me, like, there's no way he's taking that USC job. So, I'm just keeping my eye on it. I'm not saying that's going to happen at all. I'm just keeping my eye on it. And um, talked a little baseball, answered your questions. I think we did everything we needed to do. Sign up at Hog Sports right now, HAWGsports.com. $1 right now for your first month, HAWGsports.com. All right, everybody. Thanks, Danny West, for hopping on. Appreciate all your questions. This has been Trey Biddy with Hogsports.com. And we'll catch you next time. 